Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is December 22nd, and right now we're looking at the infrared satellite imagery. Trough dropping a lot of cold air down between Hawaii and the West Coast of North America. We're going to have some active weather here over the next couple of days, and the potential for some more active weather as we go on into the Christmas Eve time period. You might have heard some chatter about windstorm potential. We'll take a look at the latest on that. we got the 12Z European data coming in hot, so we'll be able to check that out. And yeah, a lot of stuff to look at here. We're just going to go ahead and jump right into things here because we do have some wind advisories up for portions of the Southwest BC, portions of San Juan's, Whidbey Island, Skagit, Whatcom County, some of the Washington coast as well. We have some winter weather advisories that may get extended across portions of the Cascade as we go through tonight. There's a winter storm warning for the North Cascades also. And you can see we do have the threat of a thunderstorm or two today, all the way from Newport North across the Washington coastline and some wintry weather still across some of the higher terrain of portions of of Western Montana, kind of wrapping up here, but there could be more on the way. We'll go over some of that more here in a moment also. And so taking a look at the Tempest Weather Station, uh, solar powered lightning detection system with it. Uh, click on the link down below. You save 10% off. Highly recommend this weather station. Now looking at 500 millibars or 18,000 feet fresh off the press, 12Z data, European model. You can see that trough really extended all the way down. Very unique trough so far south here that this is really going to bring some very deep subtropical and tropical moisture back up on the west or the eastern periphery of it and back up towards the west coast of North America. And this could be hammering portions of California over the next few days. The question is, are we going to get this strong system kind of riding up here and impacting portions of Oregon and western Washington or not? And models have been pointing at that for the last few days, but we do have some changes in this morning's model runs and i'll show you the latest on that here in a bit but what's going on here at 18,000 feet you can see just how cold this air mass is driving down across pacific ocean and then you bring this area up we're watching this area of potential development as we go through late on the night of the 23rd and then early morning christmas eve riding up across western oregon and washington you can continue to see that very cold air here out across pacific ocean it's going to be with us as we go through the day on Christmas, keeping that trophy and around, and then finally starts to push through as we go through what it's about, about December 27th. And the ridge tries to build in here at least temporarily before we might get active again after that. More on that here in a moment. Now, if we take a look at dynamic tropopause pressure, so you can kind of see this storm here developing as we go through the 23rd into the 24th. So models, we're keeping this a little bit further west here, or at least the European model was, and bringing a much more sinister storm up the coastline of Oregon into Western Washington. It's backed off on the last model run, the track taking a little bit further of an easterly route, and that would leave us with much less wind here. So a, a very dynamic forecast coming up here. What a time to be a, be a meteorologist when some of the models are showing extremely damaging winds and other models are backing off last minute. So if we look at the European, the 12Z data versus the 06Z data, there's the Pacific Northwest front and center on this image. If I put that into motion, you can see our system kind of kicking off the wind advisory as we go through the day today. We continue on in through Tuesday and you see that storm under development right off the California coastline, but you see the changes that are coming here just between the 6 and the 12Z data. A very potent storm on the 06Z is much weaker on the 12Z and look at this difference by the time you go towards Christmas Eve morning. Just an absolute hammer blow, a unique windstorm, a classic track where you would get extremely damaging winds across the region versus much less impact here on the 12Z uh, European data. So you can see the problem. Is this going to bounce back to the West here and become stronger on the 18Z model run here? What do you tell the general public? You know, this is the problems that the National Weather Service offices have with these systems. Now, if we take a look at the GFS, the GFS had not been showing this system for days, but all of a sudden, last night and this morning, it's now starting to show the system. So there's that potent low pressure system. And look at this. This is a much more damaging storm. The 12Z GFS shows it. The 06Z GFS shows it. So the European is the one model that is backed off. And the European was the one showing this, this intense storm for several days. So where does that leave us? Well, if we take a look at the artificial intelligence. It also shows that storm, but it is indeed weaker and taking a little bit more of that easterly track. And again, kind of a weaker system, as you can see on the 12Z data, but it uses the same data that the European deterministic model is running as well. So that would be expected that you would see that weakening. 
Now, if we take a look at the North American model, what does it show? Well, I've got the 12Z data on the left and the 06Z data on the right. These are universal time, uh, you know, and this was about 10 p.m. last night, and this is 4 a.m. this morning here. So the time doesn't really matter. It's just kind of difference in the model runs and when they were run. This one on the left is more recent. So as we go on in through the 23rd, and we go towards the morning of Christmas Eve, you see that storm. Here it comes up the coastline. Well, what did the 12Z data show? It shows shows an extremely potent storm riding up across western Oregon. The 06C showed it as well. So what do you believe? The GFS and the NAM or the European model at this point? Well, you kind of lean towards the European, but you can't just outright discount this storm just yet. If the 18Z European does not show it and the North American model backs off on the 18Z data, then of course you kind of call off the guard here and you understand that you're not going to be getting that big windstorm. But still, it's such a high impact event that you still have to kind of keep it in the back of your mind and at least prepare people for the potential of a very strong storm. Now, looking at the European ensembles, and again, you can see what was happening last night versus what's going on today uh, or this morning here, a, a much weaker storm coming up the coastline there. So you can see the ensembles uh, are also showing the much weaker storm on the European model. And here's the 12Z data. So you can see that strong wind here for California, but really not much at all for Western Washington or Western Oregon versus what it was showing in the 06Z model. Watch this. Look at the difference here. Just the six hours it made. And the Europeans been showing this potent storm here for several days now. And all of a sudden the 12Z data just absolutely takes it away. So again, the 18Z data will be coming out here at about what? four o'clock or so. So we have several hours to wait. The GFS, you can kind of see it would bring a very potent windstorm up the region there as well. So yeah. Um, and the region, the reason why a storm that comes from this track could be so damaging here is because you have upper level wind support here as well. Some of these low pressure systems, you know, they come off the, the Pacific Ocean here and they come more out of the west or the southwest, and they don't really allow for those upper elevation winds to mix down. But if they perfectly parallel the terrain, like as in the Columbus Day storm in 1962 is when this they made this, uh, they did this paper for the Columbus Day storm. But yeah, that's what this system was showing. It was showing some very damaging winds coming up the Willamette Valley and even potentially up into Western Washington. So yeah, that's why we're so concerned about the track of this storm. If that starts to show back up again in the models, you don't have much time to notify the general public of what is coming. Now, this is the Columbus Day storm in 1962 at about 5,000 feet. And you can see the southerly winds. If I back that up one step, you can kind of see how they were just due out of the south at 5,000. So again, paralleling the train just perfectly. And uh, if we go to the North American model as of this morning, you can again see those southerly winds. So again, it would be such a high impact event that you got to at least kind of put out the, the warning that we could be dealing with a, a potent system. And there was, um, I believe this is the European, the 060 run as well that was showing uh, the very strong storm also. So anyway, now on to snowfall here. Let's scroll through here. And as we go through this afternoon and evening, you see we do get a few inches of snowfall for the Cascades. This is about 10 p.m. tonight wrapping up. So they may put out a winter weather advisory for that. They do have one up for the Olympic Mountains as well. And then we scroll on into the upcoming days. And you see, I mean, there's not a lot of snowfall out there as you go through Christmas Eve. I mean, this is accumulated positive snow depth change in inches, but there's not a lot of snowfall, especially for the Cascades. I mean, another three inches for Snoqualmie Pass by the time you go towards Christmas. That, that's not a good thing here. The snowpack is already really looking pretty sparse up there. So as you go out towards 200 hours, that's not a lot of snowfall. That, that's not good over the next 200 hours. However, if we go off into fantasy land, you can see it starts to bump up those totals. But again, that's way off over 200 hours out in the forecast. So not a good look here over the next 200 hours for the Cascades of Washington on in through the very early portion of the new year. And if we look at total snow depth in inches, I'll scroll through, you know, 200 hours here and you see it's not changing much. Not good news for the ski resorts across the higher terrain of Washington and Oregon. I mean, just some horrible looking amounts out there. Wish that would change, hoping it does. And we cross our fingers and we start to get some of the snow start to show up here in the first week of January. But again, it's so far out in the forecast. I don't want to 
start to you know harp on that too much. Now, looking at the artificial intelligence here coming up on the left versus the European on the right, we'll look at a little bit of the extended forecast. There goes our trough that'll be with us as we go through the 26th. Then we get a ridge trying to build in here. And the question is, is this going to bring some atmospheric river activity? Well, previously it was showing that it was going to, but now this is a much cooler system here on the artificial intelligence, kind of swinging across the region. And you can see the heights kind of lowering to the north of the Pacific Northwest or Central BC northbound. So it looks like maybe a cool cooler system sliding through there towards the end of the month, but not that deep atmospheric river, moist, warm flow that we were looking at in past days. So the forecast shifting up quite rapidly there. And then both models kind of show another cold air mass dropping down somewhere, either Western Canada or portions of the Gulf of Alaska. And that could be bringing us some more active weather as we go through the first month of January, hopefully helping to build up that snowpack across the Cascades that we so desperately need and does not look like was going to happen over the next week or so and the artificial intelligence so here we go there's that system that rides up the coastline troughing with us here as we go through the 26th then we get a bit of a break atmospheric river activity up into southeast alaska portions of western bc as we go through the 28th the 29th but then it's a fairly progressive frontal system by the time it gets towards washington oregon idaho and montana as that kicks through another little bit of a break there and then maybe some more active weather as the gulf of alaska trough gets rejuvenated as we go through the first week of january we'll see about that they'll check back daily for that six to ten day six to ten day yada 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 there's a patreon page if you like I'll probably be doing a live stream here for the West Coast because California is really under the gun for some very potent systems rolling through here. And again, the 18Z data is going to tell us a whole bunch on what's coming. Are we actually going to be dealing with the windstorm or are we going to be backing off at the last minute after the European was showing it for several days? So anyway, hopefully you guys are having a good day and I will catch you guys in the next forecast.